Hi there, Psycho Enthusiasts, and welcome to the next episode of Friday Psycho Best Practices. My name is Vasily Fomachev, and I'm a Psycho Technology MVP. In this episode, I'd like to talk to you about Psycho configuration files, uh, Psycho config file patching, uh, how Psycho uses config files, and just a few recommended practices around um, using configuration files. So first, let's take a look at where config files are stored and how Psycho uses them. Let's take a look here. So Psycore being a .NET app follows the standard .NET uh, folder structure. And as we would expect, we have the web.config file, which contains the .NET application configuration. And we have app underscore config folder, uh, which contains the rest of the configuration files. Now, before um, Psycore 8.1, uh, the Psycore configuration was stored in the web.config file with 8.1 and up. Sitecore configuration, the configuration uh, section was exported into a separate Sitecore config placed in the app config folder. So that's something you want to keep an eye on when you work with older versions of Sitecore versus the new ones. So everything in the app config folder gets compiled eventually into one large configuration, except um, Sitecore configuration, except for, of course, some of the config files that are referenced by the web.config file, like, for instance, the connection strings file. All the other configuration files are compiled at application start time into one huge Sitecore config. You can actually view the Sitecore configuration file or the final version of the Sitecore configuration file if you go to the Sitecore uh, slash admin slash show config right here. Uh, you have to be logged in as an admin to view it. But here's where you can go and check the effective configuration, so the compiled configuration that results from adding up all of the config files in the include folder. Now the include folder is different from let's say prefetch and security folders in the way that if you place a configuration file in this folder it'll automatically be compiled into the Cypher configuration on application start and uh, as you can see you can enable and disable files for instance the default Cypher uh, installation comes with some of the config files uh, ending on the dot example that disables those config files. In fact, the way Sitecore reads configuration files, it puts them in the alphabetic order and it pretty much does a match on the dot config extension. So as long as the file ends on the dot uh, config, it's going to try to compile it um, into the Sitecore configuration. Otherwise, it just simply ignores it. So uh, an easy way to disable a configuration file is to simply change the extension. So do uh, use dot example dot disabled, um, you know any any dot extension changes that you'd like to make. Now, since Sitecore alphabetizes the configuration files, what that means for us is that it'll first process config files with numbers, then it'll process them in alphabetic order. That means configuration files starting with letters later in the um, alphabet will be compiled in last. The reason why it's important is because let's say we have a setting in a config file that starts with a number. If we have the same setting with a different value in a config file starting let's say with a Z, that value will take precedence over the one that's in the config file that starts with a number because that Z config file will be compiled in last and it'll override the value that was created by the number config file. Right? So a frequent practice in Sitecore development is to name uh, final values or final config files or custom config files starting with a Z. So that way those config files get compiled last into the configuration and therefore they do not get overwritten by any other configuration files. Now another important thing to know is that first Sitecore compiles files in the root of the include folder. So it'll start going through these files first. Once it's gone through these files, it'll look into these folders. So another way to make sure that your files don't get compiled um, before any other files is to put them, let's say, in in another folder in the include file. 
that actually also that that takes uh, presence over naming a config file with a Z. So we have, for instance, a Z glass mapper that's currently disabled. As you can see, the dot exclude extension here. Let's say if this file was enabled, uh, it would be compiled last in this folder, and then cycle would come in, let's say, into the Bofi folder and start compiling these files. So if you uh, already have files starting with a Z, and if you uh, you know, running out of space to add Z's or prepend Z's to the file name, you know, start with one and with, I don't know, 30, 40. Um, you know, if you don't want to get silly with the Z naming convention, just simply create a folder. Put your config files in there and keep it nice and clean and organized. In fact, what I recommend is uh, creating a separate folder for all the custom files that pertain to a custom solution. So as you can see here, we have a custom Bofi folder. Um, that pertains to a custom uh, solution and all of our config files for that um, project uh, are placed in that folder neatly. Now if we have a multi-site solution we might create multiple folders, a folder per website and we, if we're sharing any configuration files or um, if we end up with global config settings we'll put them in the global folder. We might actually create a parent folder call it you know the name of the company uh, conglomerate, you know, the umbrella that all the companies fall under, and then inside of that folder we'll create folders for each website. So that makes it very easy uh, to navigate through to find files, custom files, and uh, um, find custom files that belong to a certain implementation, a certain website. Now, so we've talked about the patch files, okay, so we looked at the folders. Uh, now, I keep mentioning patch files, so what are patch files? Well, Sitecore by default, the default Sitecore configuration is stored as we just mentioned in the app config folder. And the bulk of it is uh, in the Sitecore.config, um, the rest is uh, in the other configuration files in and or outside of the include folder. So there are a couple ways in which we can affect uh, the configuration introduced changes. Um, or um, new functionality in Sitecore, we can go in and directly make edits to config files, or we can use patch files. Now, patch files follow a certain uh, format that allows patching the XML configuration, uh, overriding it, which is actually the recommended way of doing it. So uh, instead of going in and manually making changes to config files, if it's a Sitecore configuration, if the, if the change you're trying to make uh, belongs to the Sitecore section of the configuration or the Sitecore config, it is recommended, very strongly recommended, to use patch files. And how to use patch files, how to create patch files, you can simply um, Google that. There is, a, uh, there is plenty of information on the web around that topic. So as you can see, the very first one is the include patching files PDF file. Um, Sitecore CMS 6 or later so that includes all the recent versions the patching facilities have not changed or haven't been updated dramatically uh, there were some I believe small changes but nothing uh, nothing dramatic or game changing so if you look through this PDF you'll have a pretty good idea of how to create patch files now here are a couple pitfalls that developers fall into so first of all, some people, some developers go in, uh, log into Sitecore servers and manually make changes to config files. And as we've already established, that's not a recommended practice. Uh, we want to use patch files for that. We, under, we want to use patch files and we want to include those, those patch, uh, patch files in our Visual Studio solutions. Uh, so that makes it easy to deploy to a new instance. So the preferred way of deploying it, if everything is set up, all we have to do is just simply publish uh, our Visual Studio custom solution into the website folder. That'll copy the binaries, that'll fall right into the place with a bin folder, be merged, and it'll also drop in the configuration files um, into the app config folder. So it's important to follow the same folder structure in your solution to make sure your folders get merged properly. So that's one aspect. Then uh, the second pitfall that developers fall into is that some understand that it's important to create patch files. Uh, it's important to 
update values. So instead of going in and manually it's, uh, adding the changes, uh, they also, understanding the concept of continuous integration and automated deployment, they decide to include the entire file in the solution and then they make a change to that file, which is also not a recommended practice and here's why. Let's say Cypher comes out with an update uh, and uh, it's a, a large update, it's a major update. There were many changes, let's say, to a Cypher config file, right? So the new version has some settings changed, removed, some of the, some of the new things added to the Cypher config file. However, prior to the upgrade, we, you know, well, uh, we've decided to include that in our solution, make some changes. So now, when we update our Cypher instance and go to publish, what's going to happen is we'll override the new Cypher config with the old config file, right? So obviously that's something we don't want to do. And uh, you know, more often than not, we, we understand that risk. However, uh, very few developers have gone through a maintenance upgrade of Sitecore. Uh, you know, some, some developers talk about being painful, and this is where pain really comes from, is when the solution isn't very clean, uh, isn't very well maintained. Sitecore upgrades, if given the solution is properly structured and well maintained with proper patch file usage, um, and, and uh, automated deployments isn't that hard to upgrade. But once we start including full config files, what we're going to have to do is use some type of uh, text comparison tool and compare the file that's included in our solution with the file uh, that comes with a new Cypher version and compare them line by line, literally going through and figuring out what's changed. Uh, in the new config file. So either copying the customizations from the config file included in Visual Studio to the new Sitecore config file, or copying the changes from the new version of Sitecore configuration file and uh, the things that were added or changed in that file into the, uh, into the one that's checked into our solution, therefore prolonging the pain and having to deal with it uh, during the next upgrades. So it's very, very, very important um, to include uh, only custom patch files in your Visual Studio solutions and never include um, actual Cypher config files. Uh, what I like to do is uh, separate files by component. So following the Cypher um, component-based architecture, I would usually have a configuration file per component. I would usually have one main file that contains all the settings for uh, that particular website. If it's a multi-site instance, I will also have a config file that uh, stores global settings. Let's say if we look at it here, so uh, main file is usually the file that's uh, uh, responsible for storing configuration for the entire website. Serialization file is uh, something I use uh, for content serialization that works with Unicorn, uh, also a tool I recommend personally. Uh, for content serialization and automating your deployments. Uh, and then, uh, as you can see, what I try to do is follow the naming convention, the namespace, um, uh, and carrying that namespace through the code as well as configuration. Um, so first of all, it you know, makes things organized so we can see exactly which projects these config files came from. And then two, once you start looking at the show configuration files, um, you can actually see the source of the patch. So for instance, here this processor was patched by the following config file. So show config points you to the file. And knowing the name of the file, given we've followed the uh, naming convention, retaining the namespace of the project, that'll tell us right away where, the, where it's coming from. Is it uh, uh, first of all, is it our custom config file? And then second, uh, which project contains the config file? So using the namespace, we can easily tell that. All right, so let's see. We talked about patch files, uh, talked about including those, uh, renaming those uh, uh, with the Z, uh, putting those in folders, organizing them. I think we pretty much covered it. Uh, it's important to learn the patching syntax. There are some shortcuts around it, um, and you can, again, find it all on, um, on the web.
just make sure that you're not including um, the default Cypher config files in your solution. That is the biggest and most probably painful pitfall um, of Cypher developers. So hopefully you liked this video. Uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tips like this. Uh, again, check out cmsbestpractices.com. Uh, lots of good stuff on there now. And uh, I will see you next Friday. Over and out.